Welcome to Radnor Studio 21 and Relationship Matters. This is Linda Hirschman, licensed marriage and family therapist with the Couples and Family Wellness Center, providing counseling for individuals, families, adults, teens, and tweens. Today my guest is Rabab Ama, licensed marriage and family therapist and Scream Free Parenting Certified Coach. Rabab, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Okay, Scream Free Parenting. Mm -hmm. When I read that, I thought, okay, this is brilliant because who would say, no, I'd rather just scream. So could you tell me a little bit about Scream Free Parenting and how you got involved in it? Uh, well, that goes back, um, I would say years back when I started actually studying psychology to start with. I had, uh, I found myself having conflicts or some communication gaps with my daughter. And I realized that I need to do something about it. I need to not repeat the patterns or the words or the actions that I used to dread. And I decided then to study psychology, specifically marriage and family therapy. Uh, Scream-free parenting was extremely exciting and interesting for me because it actually enforces that idea of having the connection with your child and um, stay calm, connected, and keeping your cool at the same time. And they introduced that idea of the focus is actually parenting is about parents not the kids. Okay, that makes sense to me. <laughs> but can you elaborate on that a little bit more for people for whom that might be a little bit of a new concept? So we tend to emotionally react uh, when we deal with uh, various issues with our children. And those emotional reactivities can be screaming, yelling, even the silent treatment is an emotional reactivity. Controlling, slander, you name it. So screen-free parenting is about self-focus. Why do we emotionally react? It's actually because of our own anxiety. So we need to work on ourselves to direct the focus on ourselves to be able to be calm and cool and provide that calming presence in the family. And we talk, when we talk about uh, having co being cool, is actually about uh, creating a space, holding a space for the self and for the children, being calm and connected. So I'm calm, but still able to communicate and connect with my child. To me, that was a very interesting uh, concept. How can I be calm, but still connected? So I, I, I dived into it, and it was fascinating to me, the idea of focusing on the self to be able to control our own anxiety, our own reactivity, and create that safe environment, focus on our reactions, what we say, what we do, um, being able to, when we create a space actually, we are holding um, uh, a space for the, our children to be free, to think for themselves. Because ultimately, we are, as parents, uh, responsible to our children, not for our children. Or, as I always say, our job as parents <coughs> is to keep our kids safe, not to keep them happy. Exactly. Actually, it's also about um, creating the environment for them to be themselves, to be self-directed themselves, to launch uh, adults, they are self-directed, decisive, uh, responsible. But we are not responsible for their own choices. We cannot control them. We can only control our own emotions, behaviors, thoughts. So once we recognize that and we let go of that control and let them make their own choices, and also let them also bear the consequences instead of protecting them from the consequences. Okay, can I, 
give a scenario here and <coughs> hear a little bit more about how you would create this safe space in an actual situation? So I will give you a very common complaint when I see uh, teens and their parents about the messy room, cleanliness. So when we claim that we are giving the children their space or their room, are we really giving them their room? Do they feel that this is their space or we are acting as if as it's still ours? Well, that's a hot button topic. Yes. Yes. So if the teen is feeling that this room is theirs, then they will take responsibility and ownership. But when we are really uh, pushing them to clean and do, we are acting as if as it's our space, then they feel they are invaded. But then where does one draw a line between giving a teen the freedom to keep their room messy and having it be a public health hazard? Yes. So being cool and calm and connected does not mean that we are permissive and we are creating chaos. It also comes with building boundaries and there's a hierarchy. So we are we need to take back our authority. So when I tell my child, for instance, don't make me angry, who has the power here? Actually, I am giving them the power. It's I'm giving them my remote control of my emotions. Mm -hmm. So when I take that power back and I am in control and calm and focus on, our, my, on myself, on my reactions, my feelings, and let them have this freedom, but also they will need to bear the consequences without protecting them from the consequences. Let them struggle, although that can be very um, difficult for a parent to accept. You want me to let the child struggle? How? I think it's important to let them bear the consequences of what they are doing within these boundaries and within the system. I agree with what you're saying. I'm still curious, though, about where, where the consequences are. So if a teenager has a messy room and has plates in the room and so on and so forth, they may not experience living in that environment as a consequence. And as a parent, suddenly I've got a consequence because I have no more dishes. They're all upstairs in my kid's room. So where is that line? So the line is when you, you give them choices. So there is a freedom of choose and you give them choices within your structure, within your system, within your authority as a parent. And you let them bear these consequences. But you need to always, we need always to keep our calm. The issue is that sometimes we have this emotional reactivity and we yell, we scream, we give them the silent treatment. And then is it about us, our anxiety, what we are experiencing, or is it about them to make a choice? And when we set boundaries and consequences, we need to enforce consequences that, they are, that you can endure yourself. Oh, absolutely. And you are able to enforce. I always think about when my son was young, one of my girlfriends who had kids my age, when her kids would start misbehaving, she would start out calm and say, okay, stop it, okay, stop it, okay, stop it. And then finally, she would just blow and scream, that's it, you're never watching television again. And I was a long way from becoming a licensed marriage and family therapist at that point, but I knew that that was not an effective way of parenting and that we teach 
other people how to treat us, we teach our children how to treat us. And Absolutely. she was teaching them that they could just keep testing her. She'd blow up and scream and then put out a consequence that couldn't possibly be enforced. Yes. So what you're saying then, if I'm understanding, is in the case of the messy room with all the dishes, because I hear this a lot. Yes. That it's not that you're not giving them permission to not clean their room because it's their space, but that there are consequences that will happen if they don't clean the room and it's their choice. Yes. And then... And we need to also understand that teens or children, they test us. They, they Really? <laughs> <laughs> so glad I was sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> they always test us, and they know that at a certain point, you know, they will keep pushing and pushing and pushing. They, no, she's going she's gonna to flip. They are waiting for you. Mm -hmm. They are waiting for that reaction. So They learn to read yes. our point. Yes. yes. And then it's up to us what kind of a lesson or what kind of uh, behavior or reaction we want to display for them. And uh, I think it's important if we want our kids to be launched as successful, self-directed, uh, responsible, calm adults, we need to model that for them. And they will challenge that. And that's our own struggle, how we will react to that challenge. Okay, let me give you another scenario mm -hmm. because we've got teens here and let's talk about young children for a moment. You are in the supermarket at the end of the day with your child, they're hungry, they're tired, they're cranky, and they start throwing a tantrum. Mm -hmm. Not that I would know anything about this. Yes, of course. Yes. How do you hold on to yourself and deal with your child who is unable to self-regulate in that moment? So when they are doing that, sometimes we project that when they act out, it's like projection on us. Like we are thinking of how people are viewing me as a parent in public. Mm -hmm. So are people think that I am not a good parent? I, c I don't know how to discipline. Is this, is this the focus? So when that is the focus, then this will stir anxiety inside of us and we'll start to react. But when we focus on this is their reaction and this is separate from me, then I will act from a place of calmness and I will be able to manage it, whether I leave the place, maybe they are hungry, I will take them to eat, whatever the decision is. But they see you, they see you as a parent and your facial expressions and how you are interacting with them. And that will influence how they really, for how long they're going to do the tantrum, uh, how they're going to do it. And if they see that you are not actually responding in a, I would say, the negative way, like you are not, you are not giving them that negative attention, then they see it's not working. Mm -hmm. It's all about us focusing on how we want to present ourselves and how we view ourselves in front of our children. And I think... The one thing that a lot of parents I see doing that they don't follow their promises on their promises. So when we say there are certain consequences, we need to follow through because this principle of screen free parenting is about integrity. It's about the process versus the content. It's about uh, what we want to do versus uh, the principle versus the results. So when we follow through the consequences, when they see us, when we have this integrity, then the children will learn from us. It seems like a lot of what this is about is recognizing that there is a place where you stop and your child starts and there's a space in between yes. that. There is this boundary. Yes. And that is particularly hard today, especially in the mainline area, which is so 
achievement oriented and where parents make their children their careers. You brought a good point, and this is one of the points I have here. So we want to teach children that the world does not revolve al around them. So when we are evolving, we are just doing everything around the children, we forget about ourselves and we forget the focus. We need to let the children know that they are not the focus of the universe. So when we do, act we, you see parents running around from activities from here yes. to there. They have no time for themselves. The marriage is suffering. The, uh, there is no marital relationship. No, they are not having sex. They are not really having time for themselves. And all the activities are actually orbiting around kids. Who are exhausted and anxious themselves. Yes. So now we will look at priorities. We want to first start with what we want to last. What is the first thing we, wanna, we want it to last? First thing is our health. Okay. Second is our self-respect. Third, our marital prob uh, uh, connection and uh, mar marriage, our marriage in general. Fourth, the kids. I'm hearing screams all up and down the main line as you say that. <laughs> and yeah, I, it is yeah. a revolutionary you know, idea. Yes. I, it's, it's about putting priorities, setting priorities straight. When I cannot, we need to put our oxygen masks first on ourselves before putting it on someone else. And this is what they say when you enter, when you, when you board on an airplane. Right. So if I am unable, when I <laughs> imagine me yelling at the child and telling them, calm down, <laughs> and I am myself is screaming, my actions are speaking louder than my words. But if I am collected and I am focused on myself, and how I want to present and be a parent and a person at the moment, then they will learn that from us. And where else can this concept be used? Because this is not just about engaging with your kids. Yes. Actually, this is the lifestyle. This is like once you apply that into your life as a parent, you can apply it everywhere. Because once you adapt this concept of uh, uh, calmness and connectedness, you're going to apply that on all your aspects of, of all life aspects with your spouse, children, career, with yourself first, with everyone around you. It becomes you, wherever you go. So to, to hold a space for yourself and others, to set the boundaries. And the boundaries is about uh, holding place and having your own integrity, having your own uh, uh, s space where you can uh, practice freedom for you and allow others to also be free to make choices, including the children. Because again, we are responsible for our ch to our children, not for them. So when we give them, when we set these boundaries and we let them make choices within the structure you are building. So you foster that environment for them so they know what choices are available. So they are free to choose within the choices that you, are set, you set already within the structure and the hierarchy and the system you have within your family. And so on a much more meta level, it's similar to when you're teaching children how to make choices about how to get dressed properly in the morning for the occasion and for the weather, and you might put three things out and say, you can choose, choose from one of these. But you're not saying, let them go decide to put on a bathing suit and go to school 
it's not when about it's 20 degrees. Yes. No, it's yes. not. It's not about chaos. Mm -hmm. It's about setting a structure and boundaries and give them choices within your authority and your uh, this executive system, if you will. The parents, they need to claim their authority and power back. And once the child sees that you are in control, this is what they need, actually. Children, yes. need a, they need structure. Children need structure they and need structure. they need boundaries. They need boundaries. Yes. And they really do, they cannot really, they, they cannot tell you, but this is what they need. Right. And they strive later on to actually to, to create their own territory. This is mine. This is what I, this is my room. And you let them do that. But before that, you have boundaries, structure in place. Right. Or in the case of the four-year-old with the tantrum in the supermarket, they need their parent to be able to recognize when they're starting to get overwhelmed and not wait until it's a big explosion yes. and be able to handle it at an earlier point, which would allow it done, to be done in a more calm way. So f f with this example, to go to the supermarket, I might maybe, if they're hungry, maybe I will not take them to the supermarket first. I will, you know, mm -hmm. uh, plan better. And right. this is part of the structure. So I will not take them to the supermarket when they're gonna, yeah, they're hungry, they get them picking everything in the car because they are hungry, they are, you know, acting out. But if they are fed and settled and then we go, then I'm able to, they are calmer. So it's also about setting priorities and see what we can do or we cannot do at the moment and how they're gonna react. Sometimes we cannot. Sometimes we don't have a choice. We have to do what we have to do. Mm -hmm. But still, it's about and and I think it's important also to be kind to ourselves. To you know the self-directed, the self-nurturing. We need also. They need to see that we are taking care of ourselves and not so judgmental about ourselves. And they will learn that from us. So start with an apology when we make a mistake. Because the only thing we can own is our mistakes. Mm -hmm. That's deep. Yeah. So when they see that we are owning our mistakes and we are ready to apologize, what are they going to learn from that? They're going to learn self-responsibility. Yes. Yes. So it, it's all about... So I think we will start with the end of my in mind. When, like uh, uh, Kove says, we start with the end result in mind. How do you picture your child to be? And you start planning. And I did that actually with my daughter. I, um, I always wanted her to be successful and I don't want her, I want her to make her own, I wanted her to make her own choices. She wanted to be in University of uh, Pennsylvania and she wanted to study uh, biomedical engineering. And I walked with her in the process, in the journey. So I am there to support, not to make decisions on her behalf. And the, el the end results tell me that um, it works when it's really followed, when it's consistent. Consistency is a key. Right. So. And when you talk about that kind of support, now you are talking about somebody whose brain works in a certain way, who has certain kinds of intelligences, and of course, most parents would be thrilled that their child wants to study biomechanical, biomedical engineering at Penn. That also extends to, and if your child does not want to go to college, but wants to learn a trade, to not get caught up in how this reflects on you as a parent and your status in the community, and to be able to really support who they are. Yes, we need to respect their choices. So when I mentioned about I want her to be successful and go, 
it was her choice that she wanted to be in that school. She wanted to study that. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important also to understand that this is their future. This is their uh, decision. They need to choose what works for them, not for us. Mm -hmm. So it's not for us to choose for them uh, what they have to study or what they need to study, what they need to do. They need to make that choice. We need to help them. We need to foster a, a positive environment for them to actually succeed and be self-directed and to be able to launch successfully and be responsible adults. And to understand your child's strengths and limitations and not try to strengthen the parts that really are yours and not exactly. theirs. Exactly, yeah. yes. To Regrettably, we need to wrap up. <laughs> yes. So many more things I could be asking you <laughs> that I'm curious about here, but thank you so much oh, for you. talking about Scream Free Parenting today. And thank you for having thank me. you for joining Linda Hirschman in Relationship Matters on Radnor Studio 21.